Hello, and welcome to the Skiff Meetings podcast. I'm Skiff Meetings Executive Editor, Andrea Doyle. Today, we're talking about the growing popularity of mocktails and how they are replacing alcoholic beverages at many events. To explore this topic further, we're joined today by Priyanka Campella of Zero Proofed. Hey there, it's Seth Borko, the head of Skiff Research, and I've got a brand new report that I want to share with you today. It's called our State of Travel 2024 report. It's perhaps the single most comprehensive report we do every year. And the best part, it's free to download right now. We have 350 plus insights in this report with pretty much a chart for basically any sector. Do you need a chart on hotels? We've got that. A chart on airlines? We've got it. A chart on consumer behavior? Guess what? We've got that too. I really appreciate if you check out our State of Travel report. You can download it now by going to skiff.com slash state of travel with dashes between every word. So that's skiff.com slash state dash of dash travel. Download the report, check it out, and let me know what you think. I hope you enjoy. Hi, Priyanka. Hi, Andrea. How are you doing today? Doing great. And I really appreciate you joining us. But before we get started, a little housekeeping. Don't forget to follow or subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening or watching. And if you're enjoying the show, please rate us five stars or leave us a positive review so we can spread the word about the Skiff Meetings podcast. And if you have a moment, why not share with a friend or colleague? Let's get started. So there are various studies out there that report there's a generational shift in attitudes towards alcohol. Younger generations are increasingly health conscious about alcohol compared to their older counterparts. Do you feel this is fueling the mocktail craze? Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I would see this more as less of a a craze than like a shift in thinking, you know? Um, There have been, for, for generations, we've had options at bars that are non-alcoholic. However, they've always been water or seltzer or something that comes from a soda fountain. Um, and now I think I'm see- we're seeing the shift of like being able to talk about um, not wanting to consume alcohol for any given occasion. Um, maybe it's a choice that you're making in the moment. Maybe it's something you've made um, as a personal journey choice. Um, But we're seeing the shift of not wanting to consume alcohol, but then also wanting dignified options to replace them. So rather than a soda, which has a really high sugar content, we're reaching for options that may even be um, healthier and just leave you feeling better. Um, So that's non-alcoholic cocktails with with spirits, spirit bases, uh, botanicals. Um, and then some functional ingredients as well that can help you feel that jolt of energy um, or that boost in um, emotional regulation just through uh, functional ingredients like B12, ashwagandha, um, L-theanine, magnesium, and other adaptogens. So these types of ingredients with health benefits actually get into the their part of the mocktail. Can you explain? Yeah, of course. Um, so... So we're, when we looked at the, the label of the category of mocktail, um, two years ago when we founded Zero Proof, we, I, we realized that mocktail actually was a very, um, I would say, uh, um, immature category at the time. There hadn't been a lot of development and a lot of innovation in the category. Um, so oftentimes you'd see a mocktail um, be served as a Sprite with ice mint, maybe some syrup on top of that. And really it's a mocktail um, was categorized as something that did not have alcohol, but may have all of the other ingredients um, that alcohol. Um, that when we saw that, like the mocktail options that exist, we realized that there wasn't a lot of room um, for, for making those a little bit more so- sophisticated and dignified. Um, because when you're putting soda plus a syrup, you're ending up with around like 30 to 70 grams of sugar per serving of your drink. Um, And when we uh, oftentimes with alcohol, we like to consume multiple drinks over the course of a social um, setting. Um, You're oftentimes, you just have a drink over in your hand for let's say a two hour happy hour or a a, a wedding or sorts. Um, So 
when you're doing that, you actually can't consume that much sugar in a mocktail. Um, so we actually completely dismantled the idea of a mocktail. And that's why we often call our um, beverages non-alcoholic cocktails. And that's because we're rebuilding that um, category with multiple premium ingredients. So we start with a spirit base. Um, that could be a non-alcoholic spirit that functions like a one-to-one -one replacement to alcohol, or it could be a botanical spirit. That's oftentimes a water-based infusion of different um, flavors and herbs, fruit spaces, um, but it is like a distilled water, essentially, that um, functions as your spirit. And in order to, so that that's like your base. And in order to open it up, kind of like, like a wine glass does to wine, um, you actually have to add a bunch of other ingredients um, to make your cocktail. So um, the important parts of those are like texture and some mixers that, that can open up that that spirit. Um, so with with a, with a non-alcoholic cocktail, we'll start with that base, add some texture that could come with bubbles. It could come from a, a muddled fruit. Um, it could come from really any um, uh, mixers that you've, you've Right, routinely find on the market. Um, and then on top of that, you could add that functional ingredient that, that I was referring to earlier. So that um, oftentimes those are vitamins, minerals, probiotics um, that just help with the add some function to your cocktail that while you're while you're sipping on it, maybe you're sipping on it for social uh, in a social setting, you're also feeling the benefits of drinking a, a, a healthier alternative. So it sounds as if it's something that tastes great, but it's also good for you. Yeah, yeah. Oftentimes you're seeing significantly less sugar and low calories. Um, we really don't take into, most times we don't take into account how much, how much sugar and calories alcohol will pack into a cocktail. Um, you're really over consuming your daily value when you're consuming a, an alcoholic cocktail. Um, and it's surprising, um, but oftentimes those mocktails, um, especially non-alcoholic cocktails that are mindfully crafted to be better for you, are significantly healthier because they're lower sugar and lower calorie. Tell us a little bit about Zero Proofed. When did you start the company and why? Yeah, of course. Um, so I got it Zero Proofed in the fall of 2022 um, with my sister and co-founder, Cherismita Campella. And um, we started after um, several years of ideation on this topic. So um, when I, I graduated college, um, I graduated from Cornell in 2018. Um, and around that time, I was really reaching for ways to celebrate and spend time with my, um, with my friends um, intentionally. So um, I was looking for ways to incorporate like celebratory beverages um, and go out uh, with my friends and, and just really commiserate on um, like celebrating the final year of college. And I could not find any options um, besides the besides your uh, normal college town bar with uh, alcoholic drinks and then some very sugary mocktails. And at the time, I was also going through a health journey of my own where I realized that in order to curb some of the, the inflammatory diseases that I was having, um, such as eczema and um, just fatigue, uh, run of the mill, um, I needed to cut down on the sugar content that I was um, intaking daily. So um, I was looking for healthy options. Fast forward to um, time in the corporate sector, I worked in entertainment um, and then um, also in robotics and um, actually using robots um, for entertainment um, at in theme parks. Um, so, wow, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, basically we were working on um, advanced animatronics and um, it was a very exciting time. We were working on um, cutting edge technology and there was a lot of moments to celebrate, take out um, our business partners for dinner, things like that. And um, was still searching and grasping for these opportunities to celebrate and participate in in these moments without consuming alcohol because I just I wasn't feeling it um, and did not find any um, aside from a Shirley Temple or an iced tea and those got really boring. Um, so through this like corporate journey of happy hours and and business travel and everything, I was I was really trying to figure out ways to 
fill this gap that I was noticing, which is being able to participate with a, 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 a glass of something sophisticated in hand and not feel like I was sitting at the kids' table. So yeah, after uh, four or five years in um, the corporate sector, I um, brought this back to my sister who had just recently graduated college as well. Um, and we decided to really just go um, all in on the idea um, and really create a, a, a company and a, and a business and a movement out of it. Um, so when we started Zero Proof um, in fall of 2022, we really were coming in with no experience. Both of us were working as engineers um, in in the industry. Uh, I was working in rockets actually at the time. Um, so really no marketing experience, but we started to Zero Proof as a brand and we did all of our branding, all of our graphic design in-house. Um, we put it out there. Um, and then within three weeks we had, we launched our first Zero Proof bar and we partnered with uh, local businesses in Venice and um, other companies that were also creating this NA um, category with us. Um, so any spirit, spirits and any uh, beverage uh, mixers and put together a really exciting um, event. We had no idea how many people would show up, what would happen during the event, what the dynamics and the social um, mood and feeling would be. Um, but people seem to be so excited about this idea that Eater LA picked it up um, we got about 150 people to show up to the first event, and it was very exciting to see. We had a live band karaoke at our first event, um, which means that there was a band of like five people on stage, um, and you sign up to go sing with them. Wow. Uh, and for a alcohol-free event, oftentimes you like you think that like no one would want to go on stage without the liquid courage that ethanol provides but actually there was a wait list the entire night people felt like it was a very like open environment where people felt like they could be themselves like actually authentically themselves um and really it was because we had taken off this barrier of like oh i need to get drunk enough to participate or like do something weird or sing on stage when i'm not a singer and that breakdown of um, that barrier uh, allowed people to become this authentic person and, and go up and, and meet people and socialize. Um, and that was our proof of concept. So from there, we've just been hosting um, pop-ups. Uh, we'll do bar programs for corporate events. We'll do weddings, uh, baby showers, anything really. So you recently did a team building corporate event in Las Vegas. Can you touch upon that? Yeah, of course. Um, so we recently uh, partnered up with Caesars Entertainment um, and CM CMI DMC, which is a um, event planning company, and we put together a corporate event where we were um, doing team building with non alcohol cocktails. So what we ended up doing was a mixology one on one class for about uh, a little less than a hundred folks on. Um, Mixology 101, and then we broke up into teams and did a mixology competition where we provided a bunch of the um, ingredients that I was mentioning before, the spirits, the mixers, the fruit, tomato, the um, oils and functional ingredients, and then options for garnishes. Um, and give it with our mixology guide and um, the ingredients all available, um, these teams went into a brainstorming period to figure out um, what cocktail they wanted to design and what functional or botanical purpose it would provide um, a name and then the recipe. And then at the end, um, it was it, it was exciting. It kind of felt like a like a um, cooking show. It got very intense. Um, these teams were very excited to bring together something that was very um, sophisticated. And um, at the end. Uh, we had a judges panel and um, the teams presented their cocktail um, with the name, the, the purpose of the cocktail. And um, it was very exciting to see how different um, the, the recipes ended up becoming from each of these teams or 10 teams, I believe, um, just with like the same set of ingredients. Um, so, yeah. So do you feel like a mocktail team building activity like that and just mocktails in general make everyone feel included? Is is there an inclusion? 
part of it? Yeah, um, I do think that like it levels the playing field to have um, something in your glass that you don't have to worry about. So um, when we started the event, actually, we had everyone, um, we had poured lavender French 75s for everyone um, to kind of like wet their appetite, taste what like a non-alcoholic cocktail could taste like. So everyone had a champagne flute in their hand, regardless of whether they drank alcohol, they didn't, uh, whatever their health uh, circumstance was, it just didn't come up. Um, and we find that for, especially in communities where it is very stigmatized to not consume alcohol, like a lot of questions come up. Um, it's really freeing to not have to have those discussions, especially in a work environment where you really don't want to talk about why you're not drinking alcohol. Um, it's a very, it can be a very personal thing. Um, so it, it does level that playing field. Because like you said, I mean, people don't drink for medical reasons, for religious reasons, and there's those that are participating in AA. So why even have to explain? So that's why I feel mocktails do level the playing field. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and and then like on top of that, like for a team building workshop like this, like being able to take something new, these ideas that we spelled out in like this mixology 101 class. Um, where we had touched on the balance between texture, flavor, and uh, presentation, um, it was almost very exciting to, to be able to um, go back and apply all of these ideas. It was almost like, a, I think, like a problem solving game for, to like balance the texture, flavor, and presentation of these cocktails. And um, I felt like the teams could really try all of the ingredients without being worried about what they were consuming. So. That's that was really nice for the team building part of it. It was like these ingredients were all accessible, all um, you could really balance um, how much sugar you were putting into the cocktail without have to, having to work against ethanol and things like that. And then people could have multiple of these of these uh, tasters um, and really test out the ingredients before putting it in. And I feel and that's a little bit difficult with mixology with ethanol mixology because you start to feel the effects um, after consuming it. Are you tired of sifting through endless resumes looking for the perfect candidate to fill a leadership opening? Skift Executive Search can help. We have an insider view of the travel industry and can leverage both our expertise and connections to find your next rock star hire. To learn more, visit skiff.com slash exec dash search or email us at execsearch at skiff.com. And in the past, mocktails were heavy with sugar and different syrups, but by you taking these different botanicals, you cut down on that. Can you explain some of the other botanicals you use? You mentioned B12 and Ashwanga. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I will say that like st a lot of mocktails and non-alcoholic cocktails at restaurants and bar programs right now are still very heavy in sugar. So I would not necessarily tell people to go grab a mocktail, um, you know, like thinking that it was better for you. I think like it's still very important to watch what's out on out um, in the industry because a lot of bar programs have not caught up yet. But um, the the um, recipes that we're creating, they're using um, if, uh, like the, the base of it, the spirit. These are botanicals that are available as any spirits. So one of the brands that we love working with is Free Spirits. Um, they are a spirit brand that has um, four um, skews. They have a gin, like a spirit of gin, a spirit of um, tequila, and a spirit of bourbon, and then a Milano as well, which is like kind of like an Aperol. Um, like it, it has a lot of Italian bitters flavors. So these four uh, skews that this brand has, um, they're really like a one for one replacement for a liquor, um, which is really exciting. So you can go in and like take this uh, your gin and make a, like a, a, a bee's knees um, and, and use it in the same um, quantity. The, the next step to that is actually because these these non-alcoholic spirits don't have ethanol in them, they actually don't require as much sugar to become to balance the cocktail out. 
like oftentimes we pack more sugar into a cocktail in order to fight the um to to overcome the overpowering taste of ethanol but once you once you strip that away um you're actually able to taste and appreciate a little bit more of the flavor of the other ingredients in your cocktail so because of that you you really don't need as much sugar in a non-alcoholic cocktail um so there's that um and then there are the calories um, and sugar that you're normally seeing in a spirit. Um, the, the the calorie content of these water-based spirits are close to zero. So there's opportunity there to make it healthier. Um, then the tinctures that we're adding, like um, B12, ashwagandha, um, these are just supplements to your cocktail that you can really you can play around with. Um, we recently started playing with playing around with um, Kava, um, and I know there are other companies that are coming up with ready-to-drink cocktails that have CBD in them that has calming properties. Um, and then a lot of companies are working on the gut health angle. Um, actually, like because you're not consuming alcohol, it's actually a little bit healthier for your gut um, health overall and your micro microbiome. Um, so just supporting that even more and, and keeping the, your gut regulation ends up having some more um, emotional and psychological benefits as well. And do you feel the sober curious movement is contributing to the popularity of mocktails, especially mocktails that are healthy? Yeah, for sure. So I think the most um, common audience for this um, for this movement and for the industry itself is people that don't necessarily want to opt out of alcohol, um, but want options. So like maybe they have a big meeting the next day or they have, they're running a marathon the next day. Um, a, a lot of our, the people that will consume non-alcoholic cocktails um, and these non-alcoholic spirits and ready to drink um, cans as well, they're really opting for those options. And I think sober, the Sober Curious movement specifically has given a voice um, to these people that that want this option but don't necessarily want to lean into being fully sober um, or don't, don't want to... Um, label themselves like sober curiosity, I think has allowed that to happen. Um, and now I think that people, because we've kind of broken down the stigma of talking about alcohol or the lack thereof in our lives, like I see people often come up to me and they're like, yeah, well, I just like in the last few years, I really haven't been drinking anyways, because it doesn't, it um, doesn't serve me or I can't process it as, as well as I used to. Um, so now I, I think we're actually like moving for like we're post the sober curious movement. Like I think we're past the the peak of that trend and we're more into this like mindful drinking. Um, and yeah, I guess mindful drinking is, is the way I describe it of like being conscientious and um, intentional about when you do consume or don't consume alcohol. And especially in meetings and conferences. Yes. Yeah. Especially, yeah, because at conferences, you're going like three days strong um, and there's uh, normally like a, every every meeting has an open bar um, and you and you're, you have a drink in your hand while you're socializing, networking, connecting. Um, I found as a five foot female, <laughs> I couldn't actually consume that much um, alcohol to begin with. So um, I was very early opting out of like alcoholic drinks. And yeah, as I mentioned before, like the iced teas just get really boring. So, so dry January has grown in popularity year after year. Has that fueled the mocktail popularity? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, it's, it's actually, it's very surprising. Um, you'll oftentimes when people, um, opt out of alcohol, they'll see benefits, um, almost immediately, but then you kind of plateau. Um, and it, and um, there's re there's been research that shows that it does take several weeks for your system to reset um, and feel the longer term benefits of not drinking alcohol. So with dry January, this challenge of not drinking for 30 days, it has one like fueled this just awareness of um, appreciating um, what purpose alcohol serves in your life and then how it also affects your body. Um, 
But then also it has boosted the sales and revenue of these other brands that um, are providing other options besides alcohol, because oftentimes it's really hard to cut alcohol out um, completely when it's such a big part of culture, like like drink sharing a glass of wine um, at dinner with at a dinner party with your friends um, or at a game night um, or even a happy hour like that's just such a big part of culture um, so the hardest some of the hardest parts about drug anyway are like actually people find that they have nothing to do um, like they can't go to the bar they can't participate in the same ways that they used to with their in their social circles um, so these like these brands and these alternatives have really given people the opportunity to um, participate in Dry January more and lean in. Um, and then it mutually beneficial to the brands is like this awareness that like at, at a social event um, during Dry January, you often have those options of non-alcoholic drinks. Um, and we're really working towards like having those options at events and conferences and work things um, throughout the entire year. but. Try January was a as a good start to it. Let's talk about costs. So Skiff Meetings is having an event during IMAX, which is in Las Vegas next week. And we looked into serving mocktails and we were surprised to learn they're more expensive than traditional cocktails. Oh wow. That is that is surprising. Um I have seen that the non-alcoholic cocktails can be at par um with the cost of cocktails. Uh, alcoholic cocktails um and then mocktails i typically see they're a little bit lower priced um the the distinction i'm making here is that mocktails don't contain those that any spirit or the um, functional ingredients in it and then the alcohol uh, the non-alcoholic cocktails do create do contain those any spirits and those functional ingredients those spirits and functional ingredients are actually quite quite level with um, alcoholic spirits. So the, a bottle of non-alcoholic gin is going to be a similar priced um, bottle to an alcoholic gin. So that's probably why you're seeing that the, the similar cost. With a mocktail, it is just a fountain um, soda or um, a bottled Sprite or something like that. And that, that does lower the cost. Um, but then again, like that people are um, less likely to actually use those options because of the, the sugar content and, and oftentimes they're just a little bit too sweet to have um, one, con- one full drink or even multiple. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be very curious to know a little bit more about that breakdown um, and understand why these non-alcoholic drinks are a little bit more expensive. Um, there are other, like it is, it is harder for bar programs to come up with these non-alcoholic cocktails. Um, and because sometimes uh, I've seen that oftentimes, even if there is a non-alcoholic option, bars don't actually print it on their menu. Um, so people are less likely to to get that option because they don't know it exists. Um, so that is something that the, the, this category is really fighting with is um, getting the exposure and um, awareness that these options exist, even if the, the bar is um, it does have it on their um, on their program, so that they like the consumption increases and um, these it's less expensive for a bar to okay. carry because because like uh, shelf space is very expensive, um, especially with events you're popping up the logistics of carrying. Um, a specific bottle and skew are expensive. Um, so if you only, if you have to tr- keep track an, of inventory for bottles rather than full cases um, of the, your alcoholic alternative just becomes an another annoyance. Um, but if there is more awareness and like very uh, well crafted cocktails that are non-alcoholic, um, I think over time, the cost of these. Will- okay. Um- at the beginning of the podcast, we talked a bit a bit a bit about the team building activity you helped plan in Las Vegas. Is this something you do with many companies that you'll come in and create a cocktail, non-alcoholic cocktail making activity that helps build team camaraderie? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've partnered with several corporations at this point um, to provide team building. Um, 
and we will do cocktail classes. Um, that was the first competition we did, but it was super successful, um, really cool to execute. And then we'll also just do bar pop-ups. Um, like we'll do a non-alcoholic happy hours for companies um, if they want to just do an afternoon um, of social um, activity. Um, that's been pretty fun. We'll like do custom branded uh, cocktail recipes, um, something that goes with the brand of the company. Um, so yeah, it's it's exciting how much um, how many creative outlets there are with non-alcoholic cocktails. We don't have to work around any um, permits um, like that. We don't we don't have to fill those standard alcohol permits at least in the state of California. So we just have a lot more opportunity to work with it. And is it turnkey? You come in and provide all the ingredients and. Yeah, absolutely. It depends. It, it depends on the scale um, that you're working with. But um, right now, our team is capable of popping up um, a turnkey bar program for any event um, in in California. Um, we have a lovely staff of bartenders that um, are all professional bartenders um, and really enjoy the the sober, curious, non alcoholic space because of how uh, respectful it is and empowering. Um, so yeah, we have a lovely team of bartenders. We have a full um, set of production equipment for, for an event like this. But will you do events all over the country or right now it's just in California? We'll do events all over the country. So, so far we've done events in Denver, Seattle, San Francisco, um, San Diego, and then LA. Okay. But we're hoping to expand to wherever um, the interest lies. So you talked about being an engineer and involved in robotics. Any chance you'll ever have a robot serving non-alcoholic beverages? Hopefully soon. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, um, it's funny. Um, both my sister co-founder and I work um, in water um, rights as well and water usage. And um, I'm currently developing a machine that will create water from air. Um and so hopefully we will use those robots to create water from air, um, make a non-alcoholic cocktail and then serve it out to the community. Well, that's amazing. What does the future hold for Zero Proofed and for, you know, the whole non-alcoholic cocktail industry? Yeah, the future for Zero Proofed, um, we're hoping to just continue growing. Um, we've, we've worked with some larger clients in the last couple of months, which has been exciting. It's giving us um, a real uh, confidence that this idea of non-alcoholic cocktails is going mainstream, which is great for us because that means everyone will have access to these options. Um, so yeah, we hope to be, we hope non-alcoholic cocktails, these spirits become household um, things that you have on your bar. Um, we currently have non-alcoholic cocktail kits on our website um, that anyone can purchase in, in the U.S. And we will ship everything you need to create a, a sophisticated cocktail. And there, um, we've these recipes are tried and true based on forty um, pop-up ev events where we've gotten data from our guests on which um, recipes are, they enjoy the most. Um, so, on Zero Proof, that's what we hope to grow into a little bit more. Um, and then for the non-alcoholic cocktail category, the goal is that every restaurant um, and bar program has these options on their menu. Um, and I sincerely hope that the, the um, corporate events and conferences sector also embraces non-alcoholic cocktails because I do think that as far as um, work culture and team building goes, it is a very positive way to create um, a safe and a creative environment for your team. Any tips you could share with meeting professionals who want to incorporate an activity like this into their own conferences? Yeah, of course. Well, first thing you should uh, contact us on our website. <laughs> our email is on our website at getzeroproof.com. But if you would like to do something a little bit smaller scale, um, we're out, we're always happy to idea with you. Um, but then also just reach out to um, your catering company um, or um, or your venue to see if they have non-alcoholic cocktail options. 
Um, if they do, that's awesome. You can lean into those. Um, if they don't, or if there's some sort of barrier that's not allowing you to, to, to lean into that, there are quite a few non-alcoholic mixologists now that look, that are willing to help provide um, the necessary things. So with Zero Proof, we'll come in as non-alcoholic mixologists and work with your catering company or venue, or venue to ship the ingredients because the distribution makes it a little bit challenging to get these um, non-alcoholic options. Um, so yeah, you can work with a mixologist like Sarah Proof, Um And then also just realizing that like, it is very important to have um, an option that is non-alcoholic that's not high in sugar. Um, because so many times I was talking to um, a friend the other day that, that was very excited that their work party had um, a, a mocktail option, but she said that they were really only con- able to consume a quarter of it because it was a blueberry mojito with Sprite and blueberry syrup and mint. Oh. Yeah. Um, and like, I, I, she was like, everyone was very excited to try the non alcoholic option. Like, actually, more people had that in their hand than, in, than the alcoholic cocktail. But people were not consuming it all the way because it was just too sweet. So putting just as much attention to the non-alcoholic option you're providing is, I think, very important because you might not see as much consumption if the cocktail on the menu is not not the the, the right mix um, or it's just is uh, not sophisticated or dignified. So it's great to have the option of no alcohol, but it's also great to keep health in mind. And when you have that much sugar, that's not a healthy alternative. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been great. I really appreciate your time and cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, I don't have a non-alcoholic cocktail in my hand, but I'll cheers with this coffee. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hey there, if you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts, please make sure to subscribe, rate us five stars, or leave us a positive review. That really helps us get out the word about the Skiff Meetings podcast and make sure that we can continue to bring you this podcast every week, absolutely free of charge. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the Skiff channel and hit the notification bell to find out whenever a new video drops. With more than 50 articles per week, exclusive feature stories twice a month, live events, podcasts, reports, and more, Skift is the source for global travel industry news. See what we've been up to at skift.com and stay ahead with the latest insights and trends shaping the future of travel.